welcome to another edition of MIW. I'm glad you could join me. Got the D-Man here, and today's topic is the 16 Commandments of Poon. We're continuing on this. We're on commandment number 13, which is err on the side of too much boldness rather than too little. Always be bold. Better to think you're great than to think you're not good enough. Better to be a little arrogant, or as my old boxing coach used to tell me, you need to be more cocky. <laughs> you know, I was a little bit too, uh, too, let's say too shy, too, uh, I held myself back too much. I had to learn how to be a little more aggressive, more mean, which I did with visualization, affirmations, and desire. And you can do the same thing with whatever you have in life that you want to be, do, or have, okay? So let's go. What's he got to say? Touching a woman inappropriately on the first date will get you further with her than not touching her at all. Don't let a woman's fall indignation at your boldness sway you. They secretly, secretly love it when a man aggressively pursues what he wants and makes his sexual intentions known. You don't have to be an ass. You don't have to be a butthole. <laughs> I got to clean this up for YouTube, okay? But if you have no choice, being an inconsiderate jerk beats being a polite beta every time. You got to be bold. Look, if you're out with a girl, she knows what you want. And if, and if you're not, I'm not saying you should just straight out tell her, well, that's okay too, I've done that. <laughs> straight out tell her, hey, I want to have sex with you. But in a way, that's better than saying, Hey, you want to hang out? Let's have a coffee. Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. When the whole time, all you're thinking is how you're going to get her home, how you're going to get her into bed, and how you're going to have sex with her. She knows this. She knows it. Okay? So you're better off just to come out and say it. I used to tell girls, oh, I'd love to get naked with you. You are so fine. I never got a negative response. And guess what? I got naked with a lot of them. That was the way I did it. You can do that now. I was listening to uh, Roger Allen Curry. He has a book called Mode One. I recommend you read that. He said, in the United States, it's not illegal. You can tell a woman your sexual intentions. I'm not saying go up to a woman and say, hey, I want to F you in the, in the, in, uh, you know, you get the message, okay? But you can make your sexual intentions known without saying something like that. Here's something you can say. You know, honey, when I look at you, the last word on my mind is, platonic. I mean, you understand what that means? Of course, she does too. So that's a very covert way of saying you want to have sex with her. You get the message across. Forget about them thinking you're uh, too forward or, or, or rude or a jerk. And even if they react negatively, just play it off. Don't let that phase you. You're a man. That's your job. She knows you want to be with her, so don't worry about it. You're going to be a step above almost every guy if you tell her what your intentions are. Straight up tell her. Why not? Be different. Be bold. So here we go. Now we go on to number 14. I can't use this word, but he says, F her like it's your last F and hers. F her so good, so hard, so wantonly, so provocatively, that she has left a quivering, sparking mass of shaking flesh and sex fluids. Drain her of everything, then drain her some more. Kiss her all over, make love to her all night, and hold her close in the morning. <clears throat> own her body, own her gratitude, own her love. If you don't know how, learn to give her multiple OGs. I think you get the picture. I'm not sure if I can even say that here. Multiple orgasms, okay? I think I can say that. Okay. If you don't know how to make love to a girl, there's many YouTube videos that could probably tell you how to do that. When I was about 13 or 14, I had an older guy teach me. Seek out an older man who you know is good with girls. I know they're hard to find, but you can. And ask him how to please a woman. Okay, but make sure he knows how first. Because most guys don't know how to do that. And do like they said right there. I've done it both ways. 
Most women like it like this guy just said. I've made love to women with, how do I say it? I've made love to women, ah, I can't think of the word I want to use, softly, not that, uh, but not so rough. That It depends. Some, some of them like it rough. Some of them like you to make love to them, but they all want to be owned. So what I'm trying to tell you is there's been times when I've made love to them too, uh, God, too passively, I suppose. And they don't like that near as much as where you take control. Maybe you grab their hair. Some girls like you to put your hand on their throat. Uh, some girls like to be choked up. I've never done that. Um, where I live here in the U.S., you got to be careful about things like that. It's just uh, got to be careful. Okay. Uh, I have grabbed a hold of their hair. They like that, pulled on their hair. And I won't go into detail here because I think I'm somewhat limited by what I can say. But you get the picture. Better to do that than to be a, uh, oh, are you okay? Oh, did I hurt you? I've never done that. Don't do that. I mean, unless you actually hurt them and you know they're hurt. But don't act like they're this porcelain baby doll that you're going to break. Because they're not, all right? And if you treat them like that, that'll probably be the last time you're with them. You get the picture. He goes on. Number 15. I have a hard time reading these. Okay, 15. Maintain your state control. You are an oak tree. You're the mountain. You're the rock. Remember that. You will not be manipulated by crying, yelling, lying, head games, sexual withdrawal, jealousy ploys, pity plays, shit crap tests, hot cold, hot cold, disappearing acts, or guilt trips. She will rain and thunder all around you, and you will shelter her until the storm passes because you're the mountain, you're the oak, you're the shade tree, you're the shelter from the storm. And if you're not, you better get the way you're that way. Get to be that kind of a man. Make a man out of yourself. Sparty Fortune says, how does he say it? Until you become a man, you don't deserve a girlfriend. That's not verbatim, but you get the picture. She will not drag you into her chaos or uproot you. When you have mastery over yourself, you will have mastery over your her, over her. If you can't control yourself, your emotions, your sexual desires, or whatever, how in the hell do you think you're ever going to control the frame of a relationship? You won't. I'm telling you. I've did that too. I've, I've allowed myself to become too emotional in a relationship. You get drawn in there. You kind of soften up. And I'm telling you, it never ends well. You've got to be the mountain. you got to be the rock. I've done that too. And when I did that, I had steady girls. I had girls I was going out with. I had girls I was just sleeping with all at the same time. They all respected me. They loved me. None of them could move me. I mean, that's just how it is. They want to feel your strength. That no matter what they do, you're like, well, hey, sorry you're upset, but got to go. Or whatever it happens to be. They can't drag you into their storm of emotions. They want to be able to lean on you in their storm, even if they're attacking you. I remember one time I was sitting out on my motorcycle, and I hadn't been by this girl's house for a couple of days. I had I used to ride Harley Davidson's, and uh, I had several several women I was being with at the time. She knew it. So I went by there and I stopped and she was pissed because I hadn't been by there for like two days. She started going off on me and I'm just sitting there. And then she started punching me. So, I mean, she hit me like, I mean, we was out in the middle of the street, okay? So, and there's people around. So I knew if I hit her where I live here, I'd have gone to jail. Now, it didn't bother me because I was boxing at the time. And she was about 110 pounds, but she was kind of a tomboy, so she punched pretty hard. So she knocked my glasses off, busted my lip, and I just laughed at her. But once again, you see, I was, she couldn't move me. You know, I didn't get upset. I didn't get excited. I maintained my cool, even though she hit me 10 or 15 times. I just laughed at her instead of my bike. Now, I would have took off <laughs> on my motorcycle, but I knew if I did, she would have tackled me. I mean, this chick was pissed crazy women will get crazy on you i'm telling you what so i had to go in the house with her i went in there her apartment the house um and i'm telling you honestly i wanted to jab her right in the middle of the face like i would a man but i knew if i did i would really severely hurt her i didn't but i did she was going crazy again i did wrestle her down to the floor and hold her until she finally calmed down okay 
That's not the only chick I ever had do that kind of stuff. I mean, there's some crazy girls out there. I mean, they get nuts, okay? So you got to be the mountain, so that's what I was. No matter what she did, I maintained my composure, okay? That's an extreme case, but it really, it really shows you the point I'm trying to make here. So if they don't call you or they don't text you or they don't return your calls or whatever it happens to be, just ignore it. Don't pay any attention to it. Now, if they're crossing over your boundaries or they're not, they're not conforming to your frame, you know, you can't control anybody. And it's not about trying to control a girl. But if she doesn't conform to your frame that you set or that you should have set when you guys got together, then you need to withdraw your attention until she does or withdraw your attention completely. That's the value of having spinning plates, of having several different girls. Because when you do, it's like if you lose one, you got another one over here. So this keeps you or helps you to maintain your balance and your center. All right, let's go to the next one. It goes on to say basically what I was talking about. Never be afraid to lose her. Never, ever be afraid to lose her. What do they say? Women are like taxis. There's one on every corner. Or now I guess you would say like Ubers, huh? Right around the corner. All right, never be afraid to lose her. Very important. You don't need her. She needs you. You don't need anyone. You're a man. You're focused on your mission, your goals, and that should be your primary object and purpose and direction in life. Never let a girl become the focus of your life. Never let them think that they are. Uh, the last girl I dated, she thought that she was. I did put a lot of focus on her, but she was not the primary purpose. I still had a primary purpose I was focusing on. She didn't know that, though, so I led her to believe that she was the focus of my life, so that, that didn't end well. I walked away from her. Had to. I was being disrespected too much. Okay, you must not fear. Fear is the love killer. Do not fear. Do not act on fear. You're going to feel fear. Don't take action on your fears. Fear is the ego triumph that brings abject loneliness. You will face your fear and you will overcome it. You will permit it to pass over and through you. And when your ego fear is gone, you will turn and face your lover and only your heart will remain. You will walk away from her when she has violated your integrity. And you will let her walk when her heart is closed to you. She who can destroy you controls you. Don't give her that power over yourself. Love yourself before you love her. Love yourself before you love her. Because if you don't love yourself, she can't love you. And she won't love you. She won't respect you. She won't love you because a person and you have to respect yourself before you can love yourself and before anyone else will love you. Very important. As I've instructed before, go to the mirror, look in there and say, I love you, man. You are magnificent. You are a 10 on the SMV scale. You're a hunk, man. You're, you're hot as hell. Now, I say that stuff to me myself all the time, okay? Now, when you first start doing that, you're going to feel like a fool, probably. And you're not going to believe it. You're going to say, I'm lying to myself. Who am I kidding? But I'm telling you what, if you do that long enough, you will start to feel like that. And when you meet people, they will see that in you. They will feel that in your presence. When you walk into rooms, people will look at you, not because you're ugly or stupid, but because you have an aura of strength and power because you love yourself and it emanates from within you. And that is what the woman ultimately adheres to and follows. Not your outer appearance, but your inner strength. Okay, and if you have that inner strength, then you have game because you feel good about yourself. As I've said before, it's not so much the words you say, but where they are coming from. What kind of a person are those words coming from? That's the most important thing. You can have all the pickup lines in the world, but they don't mean crap if they're not coming from a strong internal frame. Okay. Goes on to say, the closer you follow the letter of these commandments, the easier you will find and keep real, true, unconditional love and happiness in your life. Best Lord and King. Okay, so here is you think, oh, who does he think he is? I'm telling you what, you are a king. You are the king of your kingdom. Where is your kingdom? It's within you. 
your thoughts, your mind, everything that you think, the consciousness of who you are, who you think you are, is projected into your outer world. And people will pick up on that far faster than your looks, your financial status, and everything else. I don't care if you're a billionaire, if you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe you're the best thing that's ever walked into this room with these beautiful women, guess who's not gonna believe it either? They're not. Doesn't matter what you got, you got to have it on the inside. The outside does not make the inside. The best work you can do is the work you do on yourself, on your inner self. Jim Rohn says, if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, you will never want for money. I don't know if he says money or anything, but I tell you that if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job or on anything else, you will never lack in anything because everything comes from within you. You have got to be the man to get the kind of women that you want or the kind of success that you want or whatever it is you want. You have to be it in consciousness first and only you can control your consciousness. Your consciousness is your kingdom. You decide what you think. You decide the thoughts that come and go in your head, okay? The ones you dwell upon. Now, you compare your thoughts to a train station. You can't, you know, there are a lot of trains passing through the station. You have many thoughts that pass through your head, but you don't have to get on every train and you don't have to get on every thought and think about it and dwell on it. Now, you can't eliminate a thought, but you can replace it with another thought. You can't think two thoughts at the same time. Now, it requires a lot of work and a lot of willpower, which most people don't want to do. They want to allow other people to do their thinking for them. But you are not one of those, or you wouldn't be listening to me today. Be one of the top 1%. Control your inner kingdom, and your outer kingdom will, how do I say, reflect what you are on the inside. If you'd like to get my help personally, Mark's Inspirational Guidance at gmail.com. Smash that like button, share this with a friend, and subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming out that may be of help to you. No, that will be of help to you. Be cool.